In this video exercise, we will create common pharmacophore hypotheses from known active and inactive ligands in a congeneric series for use in lead optimization and where the excluded volumes will be derived from the active and inactive alignments. We'll be using the example from the phase tutorial, so let's begin. We'll start by importing the ligands, which in this case is the file at1.meegz. If we include the first entry and shift click the last entry, simply notice that these ligands are not aligned. Next, we'll open the Develop Pharmacophore panel by going to Tasks, Browse, Ligand Based Virtual Screening, and then Develop Pharmacophore Hypothesis. Since we have a collection of multiple ligands, we'll leave the Create Pharmacophore model using, as set to multiple ligands, selected entries and we'll just ensure that all of our ligands are indeed selected in the entry list or project table. We'll note that by default we consider all ligands to be active, that is until we define any to be considered inactive. In this example there are known inactives as part of this set, so let's click define. Now these ligands have a property containing their experimental binding affinities converted to a free energy scale, so let's select PIC50- exp as the property. Note that the activity column in the table now shows the values. Next we'll define the activity threshold. We'll set it such that the ligands with PIC50s above 7.3, which corresponds to IC50s less than 50 nanomolar, shall be considered active, while inactives can be considered those with PIC50s below 5, which corresponds to those with IC50s greater than 10 micromolar. Let's click apply and note how the farm set column has split the ligands into actives and inactives. Also note a few other options one can adjust in this panel. For example here in the required matches column one can specify ligands that must appear to match the resulting hypothesis. Let's click OK. Now we could click run to start the job using the default settings, but let's make a few changes. Let's open the hypothesis settings. The features tab shows options relevant to the selection of features in the common pharmacophore. Let's keep the hypothesis should match at least 50% of the actives, but we'll look for hypotheses that have five to six features. And for it to continue searching for five point hypotheses, even if it found hypotheses with six features. Now let's suppose we had some prior knowledge about the actives. For example, suppose we know that they should have at least one donor and one negative feature. We can set that up here by changing the value in the minimum number of features column. Let's also choose one of the presets, specifically the option that forces acceptors and negatives to be recognized as the same feature. Note some of the other available presets like treating hydrophobic and aromatic groups equivalent, and employing projected points instead of vector features. Having these somewhat common feature modifications available as presets makes it quick and easy to set up as opposed to opening up the more advanced feature editing panel to alter feature smart pattern definitions. For all other options we'll just use the defaults. As always at any time you can learn more about a given setting by pressing the help button. Over in the scoring tab, we'll ensure the phase hypo-score metric is being used to rank order hypotheses. Check out our previous videos or press the help button for more information about scoring. In the excluded volumes tab, we have the opportunity to create an excluded volume shell from the active and inactive alignments. So let's enable create excluded volume shell and choose create shell from actives and inactives and we'll leave the minimum number of inactives that must experience a clash as one. Also leave the default excluded volume sizing. We'll click save. We'll be generating conformers, so we'll keep this option checked on, but in the options dialog, let's enable minimize output conformers. This option requests minimization of generated conformers with the OPLS3 force field. We'll rename the job. Now before we click run, we can open the job settings dialog to set the number of CPUs so this job can be distributed, otherwise it should take a few minutes on a single CPU. We'll click run and close the panel. After the calculation finishes, the hypotheses found and their ligand alignments are imported into the entry list as a group. The top ranked hypothesis includes one donor, one hydrophobe, 
one negative and three ring features. Double clicking the blue hypothesis H button is a quick shortcut for viewing the hypotheses without having to open the group. A single left or right click of the blue hypothesis H button reveals a few more options specific to the given hypothesis, like hiding the excluded volume spheres. Now, since the excluded volumes were generated from the actives and inactives alignments, we can superimpose the ligands to see exactly how this was achieved. So let's first double click the inclusion icon of the top ranked hypothesis to fix it in place. Then we'll open the actives folder and include the first active and shift click the last one to include all of them. Then we'll open the style toolbox and color the ligands, say by element with custom green carbons. Then we'll do the same for the inactives, but this time we'll color them red. Now, if we superimpose the actives and inactives, we can get a better sense of how they align to the pharmacophore hypothesis. Observe that the inactives clash into the occluded volumes in order to align onto the hypothesis, whereas the actives match the hypothesis without any clashes. So be sure to check out our previous video on creating pharmacophore hypotheses using pre-aligned ligands, while in the upcoming video we'll cover how to edit the features of an existing hypothesis.